A tough white knuckle homecoming victory for the Morgan State Bears wasn't pretty, but at the end of the day, they find themselves at four and one. Along with the color analyst and former assistant coach here at Morgan State University, I'm Mark Gray. And Kelvin, homecoming, it was a day of great fun. It was a day of great tradition. But at the end of the day, it turned out to be a great day for a great college football game. Well, as we spoke about on the broadcast early, you know, when you look at a day of family and friends, when you talk about homecoming, and then you look at the relationship of coach, head coach Alonzo Lee, North Carolina A&T, Head coach Donald Hill, assistant coach Herbert Parham, gentlemen who have worked together for the past 20 years in this sport of football, and you're seeing them coming together and competing on different sides of the football field. You knew you was going to have a backyard brawl. We didn't anticipate a barn burner. And it certainly was just that. Now, this is a game defined by North Carolina A&T winning the statistical battle. They had more total yards. They had more rushing yards, passing yards. But at the end of the day, it was the resilience of the Morgan State defense and the problems with special teams. People talk all they want about the fact that special teams being a small third of the game, that was a big third that cost A&T this W. Well, if you look at the fact that North Carolina A&T had two chip shot field goals, had the opportunity to actually score six points that would have won the football game for them, but unable to uh, even come close to uh, putting that ball through the uprights, uh, unfortunately for them, was costly in the end. Now, Morgan was anything but efficient with the football offensively. However, they were able to take advantage of a miscue by North Carolina A&T to score their only touchdown. And if you're a fan of the Bears, you got to feel good about Devin James, who came through in a major way scoring that only touchdown, which proved to be the difference. Just had an opportunity to talk to Jevin a few minutes ago, and you look at the fact that he's about 80% right now. He's not feeling as much pain, but Devin just said that today the adrenaline overtook the abdominal pain, and today was the day we saw some brilliance out of Devin, some of the things that we've seen in the past, the stop and go to make people miss, and the power that he's developed over the last couple of years. It was exciting to see some of those things happening. And when you see Devin James get the ball twice in a series and at the other end of it are first downs, that's one of the reasons why Morgan State has not been very productive in the first down category. It's an inability to run the football effectively, particularly missing the Devin James. And Morgan is also struggling right now, ranked at the bottom of the MEAC in terms of converting third downs. And today they're 0 for 10. However, they're able to pull off a victory and you have to look at the defense i mean we came into this contest talking about the three-time defensive player of the week george howard but in the end there were the likes of sheldon jocks and troy leftwich and a gang of morgan defensive players who i might add got a little bit of revenge against their former coordinator well i had a chance to talk to uh, the new defensive coordinator here, herbert parham who's a student of uh coach alonzo lee he talked about the fact that one of the things they wanted to do is they moved the power to the inside so you saw Justin lawrence coming to the inside along with james cole put a lot of power inside and put the speed on the outside you know that the uh, quarterback from north carolina a&t tremendously athletic very gifted likes to get outside once he gets outside use the athleticism and the speed morgan state putting the speed on the outside early he had some problems in the ball game as he began to turn the corner. However, when Morgan uh, put the speed on the outside, North Carolina A&T had problems, you know, getting to the perimeter, and Morgan State able to funnel everything to the inside to that, you know, tremendous force inside and shut North Carolina A&T down. Morgan State did play both quarterbacks on this afternoon. We saw playing time from Carlton Jackson, who was efficient if unspectacular, then the redshirt freshman comes off the bench and he throws a pick. So you play two quarterbacks, each of them throw an interception. Is there a quarterback circumstance now, or is Carlton Jackson still the man? There's no question about it. Carlton Jackson is the guy for this team. Not sure right now what the reason was to give uh, the young player an opportunity to play. Uh, however, you saw that Carlton Jackson returned to the game immediately. But when you look at the leadership that he brings to the team, you look at the poise that he brings to the team, and quite frankly, uh, there's a couple other factors there. You look at how Donald Hill has began to manage more uh, the offensive side of the ball, and the overall team overall that I'll talk about later, but the fact that he's been able to have to change the concept of what they normally do 
missing a Devin James. You're talking about a team that used to run the pass. Now you're talking about a team that passes the run. That's why you see a lot of short passes on early downs. And now Devin James, as he begins to get healthy, you're seeing the Devin James that we've seen in the past. And you have to believe, if you're a fan of the Morgan Bears, that there is a significant upside considering this team dead last in third down conversions. They're first or last, depending on how you want to look at it in terms of penalties. The inability to convert third downs continues to be a struggle, yet since they've come back to the FCS subdivision, they're undefeated, and one would think that there's still better football to be played. Well, definitely. I mean, when you look at a team that's consistently winning, but when you look at them statistically, they appear to be at the bottom, then you know that there's some development going on. They must be getting better every week. Now, Morgan is slowly climbing statistically, but the key factor that I see in this football team is a level of resilience, commitment, and belief in one another. Here's a team that has every opportunity after what some of the adverse things that they've gone through with injuries to some of the defensive linemen, along with Devin James, a uh, young offensive line, has every excuse to say why they shouldn't be good this year. Don Hill and his coaching staff has not allowed this team to make any excuses. Two new coordinators as well. So there's a lot of things that's going on, and to be able to keep it all together and look up and not only do something that hasn't been done in over 20 years or so, to say that you're 4-1 and at Morgan State University, you're 2-0, you're undefeated in conference play, and you're going into the sixth game of the season. Tremendous effort. It certainly was a tremendous effort. So Morgan now improves to 4-1 and one on the young season. Howard University coming to town. And the Bears by no means appear to have played their best football of the season. So it should be a fun ride towards the finish line. For Calvin Bridges, I'm Mark Gray. We will continue to follow the story uh, as the HBCU Sports Nation continues to roll. And we'll see you again next time.